can I try something with my uh, with my poor English? Um, You're doing fine. I, I, I like the way you uh, you um, you feel and express your belief. Uh, the, um, what I also feel is an assurance about the rightness of your thinking and your believing that that's no room left for other beliefs and that's maybe dangerous okay because that might be a problem if you try to so you're talking get, about get tolerance yeah, you're talking about, talking about tolerance islam yeah. offers that level of tolerance it tells you Look, this so you, is uh, tolerance. Would mean I'm, I'm, it, I'm, it, it, I'll explain maybe, to you. It's, there is a possibility because it's not knowledge; it's belief. There is the possibility that I'm wrong, and non the Jews are right. Or no, the Christians are right. this is where this is where Islam gives you the holistic picture of things, okay. not just pixels. The whole picture. It tells you human beings were created by God, and they were not left alone. They were sent guidance. So the guidance came with prophet and messengers. Those who believed in that guidance, they're the ones who are okay and saved. It's the same religion, same message throughout times. God didn't change the message. So say for example, the Jewish people, God sent to them, the children of Israel, prophets and messengers to tell them about God. When they believed in the prophets and messengers like Moses and Jacob and Solomon, David and Abraham, they were the ones who said, help, help me a little bit out there. The Old Testament and the Quran and the uh, um, New Testament. What is the Jewish? Torah. 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 Uh, have, have, have the same roots uh -huh. until Abraham and so a little bit past what, them, what happens is this. They split up, right? Not necessarily, not necessarily. Okay. We say the same God sent prophets and messengers to all nations, not only to the Jewish people, but even to the people in the east and the west and the north and the south. All nations and all communities had prophets and messengers. That is the reason why we still see, even if you go to an Amazonian jungle in Amazon and you'll find you'll find certain tribal people they still have a belief in God you go to somewhere in Africa you'll find the people indigenous people they believe in God you go to somewhere in Australia you do the same find the same thing why because God sent sent prophets and messengers guidance to all nations because he's just he can't he, at the moment, yeah, at the, at the moment. They have, sometimes they have blood gods, Correct. nature, and water, and rain, and everything. Correct. This is currently, currently, in the past. You were speaking about, for example, you believe in the strong soul, and I don't believe. Um, but, yeah. but that should tell you the whole picture. It's not just simply... You might think it's beautiful, but think about it. When God sent the same message, there were people who didn't like this message. Imagine, I'll give you an example. You're from Germany. If the German wants to stop alcohol consumption and stop all the pubs and stop all cigarette smoking by law, tomorrow would they be able to successful do that they won't be there will be riots there will be riots there will be riots there will be uproars and everything why because this goes against the people's desires and interests they're what makes them happy and so on and so forth so in the past likewise when god sent with prophets and messengers with guidance it had messages like do not cheat do not lie but some people they thrived with lying and cheating because that made them wealthy and powerful. Just like many people now with lying and cheating and oppressing others, e exploiting others, it makes them richer and richer. You know, like how the world we see. In the past, it was like this with certain groups and they then started changing the message of God. And that message got corrupted. And then instead of this monotheism, believe in one God, it got changed into you know, you can believe in God and you can believe in this God and that God because they incorporated and they sort of said it's okay. That's what they did. They made these changes.
God sends prophets and messengers again and again to remind people to the same message of monotheism of one God. And this is what happened with the last of the older prophets, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, who came to Arabia. But he came initially to them, but for the whole of the world, to bring all of the people back to the worship of one God, not many gods, one God. Not three in one gods like Christians believe, not two in one gods like the Zoroastrians believe, not millions of gods like the Hindus believe, but there is only one God, one necessary being. So it rekindled people's intellect to bring them back to the realization <laughs> what the truth is. So this idea that people have differences of belief is beautiful. It's going away from the truth, not necessarily going back to the truth. Think about it this way, like, you know, a teacher, they have a multiple choice question. And if a lot of students answer different, uh, different, uh, you know, different choices, the teacher doesn't sit there and think, well, it's really beautiful that there's a variety of answers to this multiple choice questions given by my students. It does, it, it, the teacher doesn't though, you know why? Because the teacher knows there's only one true answer and this teacher will only credit the, te the students who choose that one true answer. It's, it's really not that beautiful to think that, oh well there's so many people who have all these different misguided ideas and don't have a truthful idea. So you are telling I have misguided ideas? I think, but no, no, I forget what I think. No, no, I don't want you to think what I think. It doesn't matter how long you talk to me, you will convince me of God. But I never con con will convince you, try convincing you that there is no God. Look, I I'll be honest with you. And we don't need no. And the, the example you gave it doesn't fit uh, really well because the, what, what teachers ask is um, um, about science. And I don't and there is no That's what I try to say. A teacher in philosophy and ethics, he will appreciate different. Yeah, but what we. Yes, he was. I'm a philosopher. No, no, no. What we What we are sharing here is the way to be convinced. Way to be convinced. And each one of us needs to make our own decision. Yeah? We can be... That's fine. We are only showing the way to approach this question about the ultimate truth. And there are ways where you can be left misguided. I can be left misguided if I don't use the right tools. To give you an example, suppose I want to see myself, how I look like. Now, I can try looking at the floor and see my reflection, or I can look into a mirror and look at my reflection. If I don't use the right tools, which is the mirror, which has a reflective surface, I won't be able to see myself. This rocky surface is not reflective. No matter how much I try, I can't see my face there. So I need to use the right tools to arrive at what I'm seeking. That's the point I'm making. When we want to believe in the ultimate reality of who God is, why God created us, not only that we have to have the interest in seeking that answer, but we need to approach with the right tools so that it can help us bring to us with the right answer. Because if we don't use the right tools, I will be always trying and then I'll never know what it looks like. Yeah? So what we are saying is it's important to use critical thinking, that's one thing, outside our religious biases, because people are biased. I'm biased. You're biased. We are all biased. Bias means prejudiced in some way. Due to our past experience. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I have to leave this aside and say no. Let's use critical thinking. Let's think critically and see what makes sense intellectually and rationally. For example. And the one point is, what I just tried to tell him, uh, yep. is uh, that uh, I, I think science found a way to, uh, to find answers to questions uh, where you can say... Okay, some questions. This, this is wrong. Some uh, questions. Is wrong. Yeah, that's right. Some questions. Yes, agreed. That's, and religious and ethical questions 
are not one of those questions. It's then beyond the scope of science. Religion and parents right. need belief. No, but sir, you know, there's something stronger than scientific evidence that you could utilize in the religious and ethical talks. Deductive reasoning is a much stronger form of evidence than inductive reasoning, which is what science uses. So just because science has nothing to say on whether ethics are this or that, or whether religions are this or that, I know they don't. You know why? Because science, that is beyond the scope of science. Science only deals with the material world. So the religious and ethical is not the material world. So therefore, if you are trying to use science to learn about these things, then obviously you're going to be empty-handed because you're using the wrong tools for the job. It's like me giving you a tape measure and telling you how much do I weigh. Yeah, but it's the wrong tool. But, but uh, what I hear, uh, when he talks of the digital you try to tell me there is an evidence. My God, no, but I know. The Islamic evidence. And what the Muslims say, so I hear you. And you're not hearing that for no reason. It's dangerous because we be... No, it's not dangerous. In the same way that it's not dangerous for a scientist to tell you, I believe I have evidence for this theory, Beliefs and uh, what's it called so, uh, religious beliefs and ethical beliefs are the exact same way. You can have evidence just because it's not scientific evidence doesn't make it any less evidence. Do you know in science? Do you not know? One second. Do you know in science that science itself uses non-empirical evidence? It's called non-empirical virtues when there are competing hypotheses uh, that equally explain the data. Due to the problem of under the no 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 due to the problem of under determination, you therefore have to use non-empirical virtues like simplicity, like comprehensiveness, as ways to judge between scientific theories, and this is non-empirical evidence for these theories. So even in science, not all evidence is uh, is, uh, is empirical. Fantastic. So then we are not we don't need to restrict ourselves to empirical evidence. We can assess other no, no, sources of evidence. What, what I'm trying to do I think the danger is so much. Uh, 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 search for answers which are not trying to tell us how to behave, how to feel. Agreed. Yeah, they're very low stakes, in my opinion. No, no, they're, they're, that's not what uh, their uh, purpose. No, I, I believe I'm with you. We're on the same page. But, but we care. But we care about how we should live our life because this is important to us. Yeah, but what, what I want to say is, uh, if you try to approach um, to what you should do and what you should feel or think or believe. Yeah, uh, um, uh, are you trying to say in terms of there are things that people do like moral actions science does not determine morality so take the example of abortion is abortion something that is good what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to say is uh, if you if you try to approach to those questions and find an answer that works for you it is very important not to think or say that I found the truth, it's the only truth, and everyone else has to think the, the same. But sir, you know what would be the problem with that? No way. Sorry, sir, just wait. You know the problem with that would be is that once everybody comes to their own truths, everybody wants to exercise that truth, and sometimes someone else's truth. Sometimes someone else's truth could have big harm on you. So laws are not made based on subjects living how they want to live. Laws are made based on what we think is a good way to live yeah, right. our life. Yeah, right. Exactly. So and then I think the philosophy, ethical, well, a lot of philosophers yeah. have a good way not to uh, to um, uh, to tell the people what Impose. they have to believe, but to uh, to look at society and to look at the people and uh, try to say, okay. How should we behave so that women and men have the same rights okay, but you and know, children you know are safe about and nobody that. You know what's served? interesting? I, I assume you're a lib like you're a liberal. You believe in liberal secularism, right? So, <coughs> you know what's interesting about that? Liberal secular philosophers Maybe. are the ones who said that you should actually impose liberalism on people who don't want it. Force. 
forces upon people who don't want it. So you know what they say? They say everything, all of freedoms are important and personal freedoms must be maximized. However, the one thing that you should enforce is liberalism itself. The concept should be enforced uh, as a fundamental concept that people must live under. And then everything else is freedom after that. But if people don't want to live under liberalism, well, you must enforce who, who, it. Who does not want to live under liberalism? I don't. I don't. Uh, so I don't think we're the most. What's wrong with it for you? Uh, I think it promotes a lot of evil in society at a grand scale. It allows too much freedom for everybody to just promote whatever evil they like. No. Of course. Liberal, okay, you just said the whole premise then, of it. Then, yeah. then, then that's not the concept I believe. No, 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 I'll tell you. Okay. okay. The liberal concept I believe in is that we, we should, as, as humanity, yes. should find a way yes. where, uh, where, as far as possible, no one gets hurt. Everyone yeah. has, has uh, um, Zugang. Yeah, I understand what you're saying, it's but the point is, is that nobody gets hurt. And, uh, nobody gets hurt is by the is based on actually a non-religious framework that does not take any eschatology into play. Which mean, by what I mean by that is it has no consideration for an afterlife. It's only interested within what do we think is good for this life. So first of all, you already immediately exclude any religious person. You're already uh, doing something that's not in our interest because we value our afterlife and things that are relevant to that. But this, the liberalism, no, no, of course it is. Utilitarianism is a secularist ideology that's based in what the best, the best, uh, the most good for the uh, most amount of people. And we're strictly talking about a secularist framework in this life. That's why when somebody's like, oh, well, we shouldn't do um, what's it called? This act because it's harmful for our afterlife. It won't give us a good standing in the afterlife. People will laugh at you. People who do, do not share with you. Who sets the point? Who sets the point? This is the one that's recording. Not this. From the religious, we say the, the, the morals come from God. Who is going to set the standard and the criteria? How should we command human beings? Because we're all fallible. We all have our own desires. That's the point. That's what liberalism allows me. This is a, 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 a very young point of view the, uh, in humanity. It's, uh, uh, I think, relatively new that uh, there are people who think, no, you can believe in what the Quran says, you can believe in what the Bible says, as long as your behavior that results on this belief does not uh, suppress women or uh, suppress children or... Uh, um, okay, who gets to define suppress? Yes, that's the question. Yeah, the, the, the liberals. The, the people, the people. No, who are the liberals. No, the people who are suppressed. No, no, no. It's always the liberals because you know it's funny. Um, like if you look at France, for example, women, the uh, Muslim women, were not the ones that defined that they were oppressed by the burqa. It was liberals, who are non-Muslims, who defined that they are oppressed by liberal French standards. This is the truth of the matter. I think that the, uh, the clothing you wear is not the, the best example for about. So, but this is an example of oppression. To have the opportunity to study or drive a car. Yeah, but studying and driving a car is not things that Muslims oppose to. That's not the point. The point is what? Who decides who is getting oppressed and what is suppression and what is oppression? This is the problem. You say, it's all good It's all good that you say that, oh, you could believe in the Quran. But what if I want to do something in the Quran that you think is oppression? Then you're going to stop me. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's my point, so, sir. The, you, your, your idea is that you could just change the Quran. Just a second. Right? Okay, you switch it to America. The abortion law that they changed, is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Why? Because it's subjective. This is what the point is trying to get to. We need objective morality, not subjective. Because when it's subjective, that's based on you. Okay, but then in books and everything, it's always under the religion. Uh, not necessarily. It's not in the Bible. The Bible says so. Yes, yes. Wait, I, I mean, in, 
in the Soviet Union, they were burning books. It wasn't. They weren't. They weren't a religious. No, no, no. no, 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 no. So, 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 so it doesn't have to be religious power that's doing it. Burning books is something that's done when some when a power thinks that the books have something that would cre create social agitation. That's what she tries to say. Okay. I don't have a problem. I don't feel the urge to tell you there is no God. Yeah. It's okay. Do you feel that everyone else has to believe? No, no, we don't believe that we, everybody else has to. I don't believe in imposing my religion on you. The difference is, I think, you as liberals would impose your religions on me if it was at an imp no no not right now because right now we're not at a crossroads however if one you just actually did it you just gave the example if at one point there was a there was a imp uh, something that was going on in the society where uh, you believed Muslims okay let me let me let me not say you let me say somebody okay no no not somebody the people that are feeling they are suppressed if there is a group yes if there is a group in the and society, then that becomes incredibly subjective because then I'll give you an example of that. Somebody could say, somebody could say the fact that you're both, no, 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 I mean, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Let me, let me, let me, let me continue with the line of thought. If, a, if I if I am against um, incest because my religion says it is disallowed to do incest, there's an incest movement that's growing nowadays and it, they're asking for their rights. If in 20 years down the road, they do get those rights and then they start saying, well, Muslims are doing hate speech because they are saying that incest is wrong and this hate speech is incurring um, acts of hate, physical violence against us and we should therefore not allow Muslims to say bad, to say anything critical of the incest community. This sounds awfully like what happened over the last 20 years with the LGBTQ community. Because even in these lands, in Europe, this was not a practice that was allowed. And this is what happens to Muslims nowadays. As a Muslim, you cannot say that you think homosexuality is a sin. Why? Because somebody will say this is hate speech. Well, this is what I believe in the Islam religion is. No, you're not allowed to say this. You cannot say this. Why? Because now we're at an impasse. I believe something and the liberal society here says that I must not believe this and I have to now change my religion according to the liberal standards. So that's why we come back to the point. We have to, do, well, how do we define oppression? How do we that, define suppression? It's really difficult. I it see does. Point. And, uh, but uh, still, I, I am on the LGBTQ side. I am so I'm heterosexual, but I uh, think uh, the point is you can't believe it's a sin. It's okay to believe it's a sin. Fantastic. Yeah. You know, a lot of people would say you can't. Yeah, okay, but, but, but that's my point. But it's also okay to think, uh, especially homosexuality is uh, quite a good example because people, I think people who are homosexual don't choose to be. They are. Yeah, that's, by the and way, Muslims, have... Muslims don't think that homosexuals choose to be by necessity. We don't think that. We're not Christians. We don't think, we, we, just think, we just think human beings are more than their desires. We think that a human being could have a desire and not act upon okay. it. So, that's it. so in your simple. opinion, if you are homosexual, you... Uh, not my opinion, you, we know Muslims who are homosexual. Has, has to live asexual or heterosexual. We believe, look, I'll tell you what, as a Muslim, our opinion is. We believe that the whole purpose of life is a test to test which of you is best in piety. We think that our actions here determine an eternal afterlife. So we're not too fussed about the liberal worldview, which is what you this this life. You have only one life to maximize your uh, what's it called your desires. And if you don't, you're missing out. We don't believe this. We believe everybody has their tests, and this includes a package of desires and stuff. Look, there's uh, uh, there's Muslims who love alcohol. Let me explain for a second. There's Muslims. There's Muslims that love alcohol, and they can't. They choose not to drink. They have a desire to drink, but they choose to be obedient to the Creator. Why? Because they're choosing the afterlife over this life. In the same way, the homosexual Muslim, we don't hate homosexuals, we don't hate homosexual Muslims, we don't treat them badly. No. The homosexual Muslim himself chooses not to act on these things. Why? Because he's a, this God's testing me with this desire. This desire is not how God wants us to act in this world. And my obedience is beneficial to me in an afterlife. That's why I told you utilitarianism here in this world is useless for us Muslims or believers in an afterlife. That's why I also told you that the way 
uh, that it is important for us to understand what is good from not because it influences the way we act on our desires. So we don't, we don't hate homosexuals. No, we just see it as anything. We actually treat it very equally. Being a homosexual is like being somebody who likes alcohol, like being somebody who likes heterosexual sex. I'm a heterosexual man. I can't go about and have heterosexual sex with any woman that consents. Why? Because I believe that the only way that you can have a sexual relation is through marriage. So I also have to restrict my desires. So we all have to, not, we're at the end of the day all tested in some, some form. But this society tells you, you only have one life, you must maximize and you must live out your desires as much as possible because this is all there is. We don't accept this. But there's more but to it. But the problem, what's yeah, what's the, the problem becomes is when you have people in a society that think that time anything, anything that goes against living your life to, to the fullest is a, is, a, is a problem. And then you have other people here, like us Muslims, who think that no, not all things that are desirable are things that we should be doing. You have a collide there. And then you'll have one trying to tell the other what to do. So it's either gonna be liberals forcing Muslims to change their religion or Muslims <coughs> continuing and saying, we're not gonna impose anything. We're not gonna tell you, hey, you have to believe this, but we're not changing our religion for nobody. Yes. Okay, but that's what we said. We, we don't try to change you. I think maybe, I think that's a, that's a good thing. That's what I meant by, that's beautiful. Um, I don't have any You think, for example. I think the misconception was your thinking that we're trying to impose because from an Islamic point of view, we can only convey the message. We are not allowed to impose, we cannot. You can have your belief and we can have our belief. Sister, to your point, uh, the diff I actually see this as something that's uh, that hurts me. You know, like, when I love somebody, I want what's best for them. You know what I mean? So if somebody knows, somebody re believes they have evidence that there's an afterlife and that I will be accountable for how I live my life, I will want them to tell me this. That's like, that's like me driving up a road and a, and a car sees me the opposite way and they know that the, the road is a dead end and they don't tell me. I'll get to the dead end and I'll be like, damn, why didn't that guy tell me? So I actually see this as not a good thing that like we don't care about other fellow human beings. Like, oh, you live your life. No, 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 I, no, I, no, 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 no. Yes, go on. Uh, I don't say you don't have to care for others. Or, um, it's just... No, so, so, I actually, no, that's not what I meant. That's not right. Like, no, no, no. I understand. Not that's not what I meant, by the way. So you don't have to worry. That's not what I meant. What I meant was, I, uh, what's it called? Like, if you, if you had a truth that I didn't have, I wouldn't want you to just let me live in ignorance. I would want you to tell me. That's why we're talking to you. Like, we don't talk because we think that we could force you to be Muslims. No. We talk because at one point, I didn't believe the things that I did, and I didn't practice the things that I did. And somebody talked to me as well. Yes. Yeah, I'm a nurse, yes. and um, I treat a lot of patients, uh, 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 and I see that what they do is wrong, and it's dangerous, yeah. and they will get sick, and, um, and I tell them that at the end of the day, it's their choice. I, I don't force them Agreed. to do something. Uh, um, yeah, I give them the, um, I give them the, the opportunity. Yes, yes, yes. Um, the I, message. Um, you deliver the medical message to them. Yeah. But at the end of the day, yeah, it's, it's their choice. Their choice. Agreed. And I'm not um, angry if they don't feel Yeah, you might I'm feel saying. bad for them though, right? Because yeah, they're maybe. like wasting away their and life maybe, or something. And maybe they come back in one year and they're sicker and then I help them again. Yeah. And if they if they choose what, to do uh, what you do, What you do as a nurse is exactly how we see what we do. At the end of the day, and when we're having this conversation, we all we could do is deliver the message of Islam to you, even in part form, and then you you want to look into this further, you want to become Muslim, it doesn't matter, it's not our business. It's not our at the end of the day, all we have to do is deliver the message. What you do with it is what you do. Even if you come back next year, you're like, hey, like I talked to you last year, we'll talk again in the same way that you said you described about yourself as a nurse. I can't, you know, Islam is a belief in your heart. I can't put the belief in your heart. So 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 we can't force. I can't force you either. Yeah, you can't, so, but you know what we could do? Is, if I care about you as my sister in humanity and my brother in humanity, all I could do 
is try try to to advise you, to try to tell you, try to inform you about something that you yeah. might be missing. That's okay. all I could do. That's okay. all I'm trying to do, by the way. Okay. I don't think that I have some power to change your minds. No, no, no. In fact, in Islam, we think that the only uh, only way you see you get guidance is if God guides you. I don't think that I have some special power to guide you. Any, no. Yeah. And the only way you get God's guidance is if you sincerely want it. That's it. Then look how similar we are. Well, I agree. We are similar. We are similar. Yeah, yeah. I don't think we're. I don't think we're different. We're like so different that I can't speak to you. No, we can speak and we can discuss. But at the beginning of the discussion, mm. and, and it was like um, misguided. Somebody said you're misguided. No. I, I don't feel misguided. Mm. <clears throat> but the, the point is, what I meant with it's beautiful is that we should have other beliefs and talk mm. with each other. Yeah. Is, um, yeah. That's. I think. No, I think us having a conversation and a civil dialogue is beautiful. However, what I don't find beautiful is if I care about somebody. Let's say, let's say you're you're, you're a mom and you have kids, and you see and you give your kids advice. You can't force them, but you give them advice. But then you see the kid doesn't take the advice, and they go and they go and do something that you that they don't know yet will hurt them in the future. But you know as their parent that it will hurt them in the future. Yeah. But all you could do is what advice, right? Yeah. So to me, it's the same thing. It's like if somebody. Um, I don't know. You need to wrap up for Maghrib. If you walk. Next to the the yeah, yeah, yeah. You can take the you can take the horse to the water, but you can't make it drink, basically. Yeah, which is no. like you can only but help can, them so you much. Can be there. Yes, you can, can be, be there. there. You can try. Yes. And so that's what we, that's how what we see as Muslims. Like, look, yeah. I'm a Muslim in a liberal society. All I could really do is when liberals want to discuss, uh, or not even just liberals, people who are non-Muslims want to discuss, I'll be there to help and discuss and speak and share ideas with them, etc, etc. But I can't make you a Muslim. I can't force you. But I believe that to be to live a to live your best life in this world and to have your best life in it uh, in your afterlife, you need to be a Muslim. That's what I believe. Now, so if somebody comes and asks me what is the best way to live, I tell them Islam. I, I, they ask me how do I make sure that I uh, worship my Creator? How do I say thanks? How do I give gratitude for all the things that I have that my Creator gave me? I say Islam. How do I make sure that I have a good afterlife? I say something, and then I and we go into have these dialogues and discussions, right? So and that's because of care. It's not because at the end of the day, you are gonna you could walk away and never look at Islam ever again. It won't make a difference for me at all because at the end of the day, I did my duty to you as a fellow human being, as I tried my best to deliver deliver the message. And I hope sincerely from the bottom of my heart that you take what we're saying to you and you go learn more, and you have more questions and you explore all these things. So it's not, we love the dialogue, but I actually care about the dialogue going somewhere. Only because I think that this is the best for you. Now, you might not think so, that's completely fine. But if I think that this is the best for you, I will of course want you to become this. Just like if your parents think that the best thing for you is to not drink alcohol, um, you could end up drinking, or you can end up listening to your parents, and of course your parents would love to see that you don't end up becoming uh, somebody who drinks alcohol. You know, what's important, maybe um, before we end this, yes, is, yes, um, you said uh, that we yeah, are liberals mm. and we don't care. As I said, uh, that you, you have your beliefs, I have my beliefs, so that this means I don't care. And uh, that's not true. Of course I care. If I see that some of my friends drink too much alcohol, and um, I, I start worrying because it's too much, then I talk to them, of course. Or if I see they have a bad relationship, and it uh, hurts them, then so I care. Yeah, no, I, I, I care. I, I apologize things. if you thought that I yeah. that I was saying that you don't care yeah. at all. No, no, no. I'm saying like, for example, um, again, you see the difference when I talk about things about like caring. I'm always thinking about an afterlife also because you come from a secular background. You're only focused about caring for your friends in this life. So for me, like if you're talking about the same friend, let's say you have this friend that's drinking a lot, you advise them about it. You know, I see your friend that's drinking a lot and I'm also thinking about this person is not fulfilling their life's purpose. This person is not being grateful to their creator. This person is going to have problems in their afterlife. So I'm caring about a lot more things because I don't have a secular worldview because I'm trying to watch out for that person. See what I'm saying? But you know, it's a, a, lot of, uh, a lot of times when we speak to friends, a lot of times we're taught this thing here. You'll hear it a lot. 
it's like, oh, but do, uh, when we give advice, it's always like, oh, but, but do whatever you think is best. You know, I don't want to infringe, I don't want to tell you, I don't want to tell you what to do or how to live. You know why? Because people are so sensitive about people giving them advice. Because we're brought up in a society where everybody's supposed to live in what they think is best. But sometimes you'll see your friend clearly doing something horrible to themselves. You know, like an alcoholic doesn't think they're drinking too much. And they'll get very annoyed at you for telling them to stop drinking or something. Why? It all arises from the, from these, from the liberal idea that we should live and let live. I live my way, you live your way, we coexist peacefully and that's all that matters. No, it's not what matters. If you really love human beings, you love your fellow people in society, you will want them to live the best life. You will want to even, you know, we get cussed, we get, we'll, you know, we'll get, we'll, people will say bad things to us and people will say nice things to us. But, so we're not doing this for praise. Okay. We're doing this because we actually really like care about delivering a message of, you know, live, a, live, your, live your best life here in this life. We're not saying, Islam doesn't tell you don't care about your life here. Just take, have a balance. You know, this life is not eternal. Your afterlife is eternal. Just so the least you could do is half and half. Because this life is not even equal to the next one. But people here, all they care about is helping each other in this life. Like a good friend will help you get a job. A good friend will uh, celebrate your birthdays with you. A good friend will uh, make you laugh and make you uh, happy to be around them. All these things, our worldly things, they go away when you die. They don't matter. So what you want is somebody that also cares about your afterlife, about where you go after death. So on that note, inshallah. That's a high hope, I think. Uh, that's really that's, high hope. Uh, look, that's a, okay, that's right. let's that's, leave it there. That, and uh, if that's uh, such a, an important point to you, now I understand why it is so essentially for you to to think you have to prove that you are right with your with your religion and that and that's maybe maybe uh, it's a good thing because you want you, you then learn you said learn to want and sacrifice your own um, time, energy, resources, whatever for the benefit of humanity. Again, Islam is categorically clear you cannot impose religion. It's not even, even conceptually, you know, if you think about it, like, has there been Muslim emperor or whatever, uh, Muslim uh, leaders that tried to enforce Islam on people? Of course there is. There's bad people everywhere. But can it actually work? That's just using a rationale. Can a Muslim leader put in your heart a belief that you don't have? No. No, no, no. Can you not lie and say you're a Muslim, but, but in your heart you're not a Muslim? That's quite a pity. Why doesn't that mean if uh, the only uh, the only way for Islam or for Muslims to uh, to get a consensus with people who are not uh, Muslim is uh, okay. Let them be or let them uh, make them Muslim. You, 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 you yeah, we would we invite them to be Muslim, but no, we can coexist with them. You know, like in the Islamic empires, we actually give more rights to the minorities than we as Muslims get in liberal countries. So, for example, I can't have, I can't live in the UK and live under Sharia law. But you know, um, what's it called? The Jews in Spain, under Islamic Spain, got to live under Torah law as a pluralistic system. So, in, in, under the Islamic Empire, they would allow the Muslims allowed the Jews to rule with their own law. This is a freedom. Go. We we have no issues. We actually. Uh, completely uh, are, are happy to coexist with Christians and Muslims, uh, sorry, Christians and Jews who don't want to be Muslims. In fact, they even uh, get a lot of luxuries that Muslims don't get in the Muslim empire. For example, uh, they don't need to pay zakat, which is the national tax that everybody has to pay uh, that is of a legal age, of military age. They don't, they pay something called jizya, which is a smaller uh, financial burden than a zakat for a Muslim. So they get that uh, thing. On top of that, jizya, old people do not have to pay it. Uh, what's it called? Women do not have to pay it. Men who are above the mil men who are cannot participate in the military don't have to pay it. And even even jizya, a non-Muslim could say, you know what? I don't want to pay it. But then they would have to join the army, like Muslims join the army in case. So it's actually a way for non-Muslims to opt out the army. You know, in America, if there's a draft, there's a conscription. American, um, like if America went to war and they started drafting people for the war. They don't care what your religion is. If you get drafted, you're going to war. Islam gives the freedom. 
again, so it's like we have no issues coexisting. You don't need to be Muslim to live under Islamic law. That's no issues for us. But of course, we will always try and invite non-Muslims to become Muslim because we think that's what's best for you. But if you don't want it, no problem. We will protect you. You know, if you go to Istanbul today, the reason you have the Hagia Sophia, the Hagia Sophia, is because Muslims took care of it. You know, before that, it was ransacked by other Christians. It was ransacked and, and horribly, horribly thing. And Muslims, the Muslim, um, what's it called, the uh, uh, conqueror of Istanbul, of Constantinople, Muhammad al Fatih, purchased, but he, he already conquered uh, Constantinople. He didn't need to purchase it. He could have just taken it. It's mine. I conquered. You know, he purchased it from the Christians and then made it a walk for and then took care of it and that's why the that's why you know it's interesting the oldest churches in the world and the oldest synagogues are all in the middle east where are the mosques that were old in europe no more because the europeans crushed our mosques after they took us out we when we we what's called conquered lands we let the christians stay and we took care of their places of worship so that's why the oldest churches they're all still in the middle east but you go to spain what mosque is still in spain you go to greece what mosque is still in greece we have no problem with coexistence in fact we are more than happy to let christians and jews live in our lands in peace in fact we did it so well you know in, uh, um, when uh, queen isabella kicked out the muslims from spain they started they they started conquering the, the uh, spain back from the muslims when the muslims went back to morocco the Muslims gave back the jizya, the jizya, the, ta the tax the, the non-Muslims pay. The Muslims gave it back to the Jews and they're like, we can't protect you anymore. Here's your jizya back. The Jews gave it back to them and they're like, no, take us with you. That's why you have Sephardic Jews from Morocco. So the Jews, because uh, the Christians have persecuted them for so long and they lived under such a good um, environment. You know, Maimonides lived under the Muslim empire in, his, uh, in Spain and he wrote under that time. So he took, they, the Jews went and ran away with the Muslims to Morocco because they loved yes, Tunisia as well, Algeria, all of North Africa. Why? Because Muslims had a reputation for letting Jews enjoy the maximal amount of Jewish life under our empire. There's no problem with coexistence. So anyways, um, I wish you guys the best. I'm not sure if you're staying in London or not, but... Um, I hope you, you know, pick up a Quran. I don't know if you already grabbed the Quran or not, but uh, yes, I have, I have. you have. Okay, fantastic. So I hope you guys read through it, and I hope you guys have many questions, and you don't leave them unanswered. Because you know the biggest issues with questions is that if you're busy getting questions and not looking for answers, that's what I'd say. So yeah, I wish you guys the best in your travels. If you're going back to Germany, all the best. But uh, yeah, thank you so much. I really appreciate the conversation. Yeah, thank you. Take care. Of Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.